Yep. And then I can, I can run all the videos to there. And then I, on the website, I can tell people to link to it. And anybody can then come in after the fact and view our meetings. Terrific. Well, it's 7.01, and I know we were going to have more people. But uh, in, in what I want to say, out of respect for those of you who are already signed on, uh, uh, I wanted to discuss a few things with you and make some notes. Uh, in the future, when we do our meetings, when we start formally, are you, are you interested? I mean, we're a new club. We can do whatever we want. Um, we can follow strict rotary protocol, or we, and we can create our own protocol. So in terms of things, opening up with things like flag salutes or thought for the day or the four-way test, um, any options on that? Because those are standard, you know, meeting agenda openings. Um, what does everybody think about that? Oh, this is Chuck Pruitt. And I, my vote would be not to do that in this kind of format. It seems uh, unnecessary. Okay. That's, a, that's one thought. Anybody else on that? I, I kind of like what Chuck's idea is because we can, we can keep our meetings shorter. Uh, the, our, our protocol could be we have, an, like we're doing right now, an informal, hello, how are you doing? You know, what's going on? And then at seven o'clock, we just say, okay, let's, let's get into the meeting. Um, I, I see uh, any nodding heads or any, sh any shaking heads. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Okay. I agree. I agree. Great. Okay. So our protocol will be at least our, for now, our protocol won't be that we'll do all of that. We'll just have a social greeting. Hi everybody. How you're doing? Right. And then start the meeting. Okay, good. Um, Very good. I'm, I'm crossing out some things here. That's good. Um, uh, the, nec the next thing on, on the agenda for today that I had is just some announcements for everyone. Um, uh, just so you know, we are a brand new club. So our treasury, uh, as Fred knows, is a little thin right now. We're waiting for the other clubs uh, to uh, send some of their donations to us that they promised. <laughs> so I was not going to go to Pets because Pets is nearly $700 now, right, Howard? Yes, and district said, oh, wait a minute, you can't, you can't not go. So mm -hmm. the district is actually funding my attendance at the president of training seminar. Yeah. Very good. Because nice. we are the newest club in the district. We are the first e-club in the district. And they want me to go and talk about, you know, share what we're doing as an e-club and meet other people who might be e-clubs or passport clubs, any new kind of a club mm -hmm. format. So they they're dragging me back for my 14th appearance at Pets, I think. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah. Well, I'm a three-time president now. I'm a three-time president. I was AG for three years. I was in the DG chain for three or four years. And I was on Pets Opcom for, for four years. So <laughs> it's, you know. So I think, I Bill, to be, you'll, you'll finally get it right. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, maybe. Let's not, let's not, let's not guarantee that, Howard. Um, so I wanted to make you aware of that and then uh, remind everyone that those of you who can attend that the, and, and register for the district conference and, mm -hmm. and uh, district leadership assembly that will be in Tacoma this year. So for a lot of us, it's, it's fairly close. Uh, I know Pamela is going because she is going to take the foundation uh, grant training. That's right. That's yep. right. So our, our club then, if we want to do something in the future, we're mm -hmm. trained. We have to be qualified. And uh, that's, the, that's May 4th and 5th in Tacoma at the Murano. I think that's correct. Isn't it, Howard? Yes, it's it the, old Sheraton, the old Sheraton downtown. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make you aware of that. I will post something on the website with the uh, um, brochure that Tom put together. And I'll, put the, I'll send that out so everybody can be aware of it. Um, so what I want to do right now, for those of us that are here, I want to go ahead and turn the program over to Pamela. And Pamela, you said it's about, you said 17 minutes? About 17, yes. Yeah, and, about 17. Um, what I would like to ask, I, I have a script. My memory isn't the greatest, so I'm going to go by script. And would appreciate questions at the end, um, but not during the, the program. If you'd be so kind to wait. 
And I hope we have some females chime in while this is taking place. So if everybody's ready, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and begin. Oh, here comes Brett. Here comes Brett Lathrop. Welcome, Brett. Hi, Welcome, Brett. Are you muted? No, you're fine. Okay. Oops. Brett, you still there? Okay. Well, uh, Pamela, continue. All right. So I am going to go ahead, share my screen, and begin. No, you got to go back to. Okay, hold on, everyone. Okay, let me do it. What's your share? Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay, are we on now? Share screen. My husband's here helping. Oh, there we go. There you go. Okay. Let me go. Right here. From beginning. No, beginning. Gotcha. Oh, thank you, David. My husband's here. Um, to begin, generally speaking, foreign assistance dollars have proven to be well spent when they're invested in long-term projects that are conceived and are run by local community members in response to that community's specific needs and circumstances. According to Rotary International, Uplifting the People of Shillong is an example of a successful project. The word Magalia literally means the abode of clouds, and it's situated in the mountainous area of the eastern part of India, about 8,700 square miles. The capital, Shillong, is referred to the Scotland of the East because it resembles the Scottish Highlands. Magalia is a small state in the northeastern India area. It is bounded on the north by Assam and by Bangladesh on the south. And if you look at the map I have up on the left, Magalia resides in the yellow section. Tribal people make up the majority of Magalia's population. The Khasis are the largest group. Magalia is one of the three states in India to have a Christian minority, majority, excuse me. It is mainly an agrarian society. Unlike most states of India, Magalia is not controlled by the caste system. Rather, a majority of the tribal population follows a matrilineal system where lineage and inheritance are traced through the women. The tribal people in Magalia are therefore a part of what may be the world's largest surviving matrilineal culture. Although Shillong is the most advanced city in the state of Magalia, there is rampant unemployment, gender inequality, <laughs> illiteracy, and health-related issues. Lack of adequate income is a major problem and is a result of antiquated methods of agriculture that are not sustainable. There is virtually no industry in the state so that employment is limited. The secondary level dropout rate averages around 70% and as a result, many youth turn to drugs and to crime. According to Rotary International Future Vision Project, you um, have to pick two areas within six areas that are provided. For this grant, we chose basic education and literacy and economic and community development. Meet Sister Bernadette on the left, Sister Helen on the right, both Salatian sisters born and raised in Shillong. They traveled to the US twice and, and stayed with my husband and I while meeting with professors at Pacific Lutheran University and Green River College. <clears throat> when we asked what their greatest needs were, they fell into two categories. Under education and liter literacy, needs included classroom structure, remodel, technology, furnishing, supplies, textbooks, and library. Under the economic community development and outlining villages, the needs were for health camps, silk worm processing and spinning, microfinance, animal husbandry, and legal awareness. The plan was to first establish a training program and several self-help groups for the empowerment of women. Women were trained in entrepreneurial business and granted microcredit loans. For the most part, these women are landless, poor, uneducated, and unemployed. These groups will be taught the habit of saving, banking, culture, and loan repayment. 
our second focus was to provide technology, textbooks, and various materials for an existing community college. During the initial stage, there was need for computers, software, computer training, classroom furnishings, and water and sanitation improvements. Belfont Community College recently approved American Model Community College. The grant was awarded December 17th of 2010 for $48,750. The breakdown is Parkland Spanaway and District 5020 both matched $10,670. Shillong Rotary matched by District 3240 for $2,330. Rotary International provided $19,500. Mary R. Health Training Center Convent in Shillong provided $3,250. And it's important and mandatory to know that the receiving grantee also contributes to the project financially. With advances in farming and agriculture training, the nutrition and health for the people has improved. The long-term benefit of the programs will reduce vulnerability among the poor and help many families to build up household assets for their family and for the future. Yeah. With improved health education and sanitation upgrades, disease prevention will become a reality. Upgrades within the school include chairs and desks for 180 students, 28 computers for lab and teachers, 40 headphones and for ESL training, printers and whiteboards, storage cabinets, textbooks, and classroom partitions. Since the grant, the first graduating class was for the academic year 2012-2013. 250 students prepared for upper levels, 64 certified in computer courses, and 45 students completed courses in English. An exciting accomplishment for 11 of the Belfont Community College students who completed courses accredited by the Martin Luther Christian University nearby, the students completed computer training courses in both hardware and software design and were presented with certificates for same. Microfinance and marketing skills programs were completed in the self-help groups in the villages. They were educated in smart savings, wise spending, matured borrowings, and investment and asset creation. The self-help training directly impacted many women in the villages by training them in mutual respect, self-help, and peer pressure. The self-help groups remain small, 10 persons to a group, and in 2015, there was a total of 150 self self self-help groups that included 1,700 women. Environmental awareness programs first took place in the outlining regions in 2013. Women were trained on the importance of preparing good soil for planting, how to maintain healthy plants, and how to water throughout the year. Unlike the United States, the Northeast India region does not have social service programs for the disadvantaged. The grant provided health education, legal awareness programs, which benefited the orphans, an old age pension scheme, a widow pension, and a disability program scheme. The grant also provided the school with an industrial bakery, including an oven, biscuit kneading machine, large tables, pans used for making bread, cakes, donuts, buns, and a warming oven that the, the sisters use in the convent kitchen. This has not only helped to feed the students and the sisters, but also helped with a small income selling the bakery items. Two awareness programs on Erie spinning were held at two villages. Belfont Community College organized training on silk rearing and the demonstration on how to use the spinning machine. About 30 participants 
participated in each of the trainings. The main aim of the training was to help the people of these villages to take the first step to earn their livelihood through silk rearing and spinning. A nine-day training program on skill training in veterinary and animal husbandry was organized. Ten participants from different SHGs covering the three villages participated. The program was conducted by experts and after completion of the training, the department issued certificates. SHG is self-help group. Three ginger cultivation programs were conducted for the women and men of the self-help groups in three villages. Those participating were both illiterate and semi-illiterate. The places where the trainings were conducted were suitable for ginger plantation. The main aim of the training is to increase the capacity of the farmers to earn by training them in advanced methods of ginger plantation and marketing of ginger. Meet Jenny and Eliza. They attended an Uplifting the People of Shillong event on Vashon Island, and they were moved by the story. They saw where they could help. And with their own finances, they traveled to Shillong and created composting toilets and purchased water storage tanks, which helped to solve the problem of drinking water for the students. In 2011, Pacific Lutheran University alumnus Chris O'Brien visited Shillong, India, and not only fulfilled her dream of teaching in India, but carried out PLU's mission of educating for lives of thoughtful inquiry, service, leadership, and care. PLU professor and friend, Dr. Vidya Thirmuthi visited BCC and provided workshops for the students. Also, the PLU graphics department created the BCC logo you see on the bottom left. Okay, now it's 2017, seven years since the Rotary International was awarded and we are still uplifting the people of Shillong, India. David and I realized how much we missed our friends, Sister Helen and Sister Bernadette. We decided it was time to visit them and to see for ourselves the impact of the Rotary International Grant. We departed November 16th of 2017. David, me, and our granddaughter, Chaslyn, who is a college student. We had greetings everywhere. Welcome, Pamela and David. We stayed at the guest house, which was remodeled and furnished by the proceeds of the grant. I had waited seven years to visit the computer center. It, the computer center was so exciting for me. It was finally time to go. And then that evening, we were dinner guests. It's to Rod Bowery, his family, and members of the Shillong Rotary. Posses know how to be hospitable. And we enjoy, enjoyed a lovely evening with them. The next day, we began a day filled with ceremonial events. This welcoming banner is unlike anything I had ever seen. It might be easy to take this for granted, but with the Kossi people, all was presented with love and thankfulness. During the day, the children were allowed to be out of class to greet us and to provide ancient, an ancient example of the Kossi welcoming dance. At this time, upper level students had completed their exams and were not on campus. Those you see are from the younger grades. The school oversees 1,400 students. My favorite part of the day, meeting the children and the, and the teachers. You don't need to know the language to provide communication. The eyes, the smiles, and the gestures say it all. It is all about relationship. Mm -hmm. The next slide we title this help. On the left you see, we need a school bus. You see, I don't know how many children are crammed into a small van. We passed this van while on our way to visit a village in the silk spinning area and see what, how they were using the equipment. Before the grant, the only commerce was selling the silkworm cocoon. The eerie silkworm is sought after and rare. Most worms only spin one cocoon, whereas the eerie silkworm can repeat the cocooning process a number of times. Shillong Rotary members brought us to a village where a very small school started three years ago. All they have is a crude two-story building 
with secondhand chairs, tables, and blackboards. The school is maintained by the village and the villagers, and the teacher's salary is paid by collection of 100 rupee each month from the family. So far, completely self-sustaining. We were honored to attend the Shillong Rotary meeting that evening at seven, where my husband and I were presented with a Kasi scarf, granddaughter presented with a gold rose. I provided background on why Shillong India was chosen for District 5020 grant, and I applauded these Rotarians for their unending years of service. They just celebrated 60 years. Hmm. We exchanged Rotary banners, and I'll be presenting the Shillong banner to the Parkland Spanaway Rotary on February 6th, along with a shortened PowerPoint recap of the visit. David Chaslin and I were officially inducted into the Kasi tribe, complete with official announcement made by Sister Rosa on behalf of the Kasi people. And then after that, the show began with the novices and the sisters dressing up and performing like rock and roll. roll. <clears throat> they sang ballads of popular India music. Evening ended with a lovely dinner where members of the Shillong Rotary were invited to join us. My dear friend, Sarad Bowery got up to speak on behalf of Shalom Rotary. He said, Pam and I have been friends for 10 years now. We both thought it was about time that we meet. After dinner, the sisters and novices performed a beautiful travels ballad and then sent us on our way with prayer of safety, continued friendship and joyful Thanksgiving. This is the final picture we have left to right. My granddaughter, Cheslin, Sister Rosa, myself, Sister Superior, Carmelina, and David. And they told us we shall never part. It is all about relationships. So I thank you, the Rotary Club, for allowing me to be the first presentation for this club. I'm quite honored to be able to do that and for allowing me to share this wonderful project with you. There, there we, we are. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Any you, questions? Pamela. That was that was really good. Well, that's seven years in the making. That's terrific. Uh, yeah. uh, I have questions, but I want to wait and let everybody else ask theirs first. I'm ready. So please, someone else start. Pam, where do we know where else that eerie? Um, silkworm resides. Is it is it indigenous to that area alone, or yes, it's indigenous to that particular area. And before, at least that's what I've been told. And before um, this grant came about, and I started studying and met the sisters, that particular um, worm was in demand, and they could sell it for quite a bit of money. And wow. they could sell they could sell the cocoon also because most um, most Silkworms only spin one cocoon and then they're dead or it's the end of their lifespan. This particular silkworm, once they spin it, you pull it off and you put them back into where the food is and they'll start spinning another one. And it's a high quality silk. Hmm. And what's wonderful is they, they're going to be getting a lot more money now, now that they can spin the silk. They'll be making a lot more money than they were before. Wow, that's great. Yeah, it's really it's really wonderful. Um, more questions? Because I made a whole list, and I don't want to. I don't want to monopolize. So well, I, I have a question. How did you pick such an obscure place in yeah, the world for this good project? Question. You know, I'm going to backtrack and, and tell you this. Really, I'll try to make it as quick as possible. But I went to India 20 years ago, 94 actually, longer than that. I was at Mother Teresa's for three months. And I totally fell in love with the country and with the people. And that never left me. And I knew I wanted to go back someday. Um, I'm a mediator. And I was at a mediating um, event. And a man gave a presentation on mediation in India. So when it was over, of course, I wanted to talk to him. And I did. And his name's Dr. Barry Bannister. And he's the vice president for international programs 
at Green River College. We became very good friends. We're both mediators. We both love India. And about a year after that, he called me one afternoon. He said, Pam, I have two sisters that are going to be coming from India. They're, they're investigating our academic two-year programs and four-year programs. They would like their community college to be um, affiliated with, or the word is slipping me right now. Um, anyway, they're going to be coming over for about five weeks. Would you and your husband would be willing to have them stay with you? And we said, sure. My husband's a professor at PLU at the time, and, and I was administrator at PLU. And so Sister Helen and Sister Bernadette, we fell in love with them. They stayed with us for five weeks. And we got to show them everything about the United States. They had never seen some of the things that we showed them. And um, they ended up making a return tr trip two years later at the request of PLU. And we, we housed them again. And during all of this time, after the first trip, when they went to leave, Helen said, you know, I said, is there anything I can do for you? This, this had not come up yet, this grant. Oh, by the way, PLU had asked me, my boss had just asked me to join the local Rotary so that I could start getting to know the local business people. And I did, and that was Parkman Spanaway. And so in between all of that, the sisters came and stayed with us. When they left, they said, please pray for us. We need to raise $25,000 for our school. And um, I said, I'll do what I can. And it was not too long after they left, I was at one of our meetings and one of the members, the president there asked me if I'd be interested in, in being the international chair. <laughs> they had never had an international grant and if I would be willing to write a grant. And I said, I've never written a grant, but sure, <laughs> give it a try and who would it be for? And he said, it would be for anybody you want. And I said, I've got just the people, you know, and explained this school and this um, convent over in Shillong. That's the beginning of the story and how it ended. It ended, it's, it, has, it will never end really. It's a beautiful story. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, you know, prayers oh, who, who's that? Who's yeah, ready? That's right. Who's ready to ask a question? I heard somebody comment. Oh. My question is, does with the roundness of it, do they have internet access? Do the computers have the access to the, the internet? Roughly, <laughs> I'll say <laughs> roughly. They do. It isn't. It isn't always. You can't count on it. Hmm. They, but they do have access. Yes. Because one of the technologies they want to look into is the use of the Raspberry. Oh, uh, Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi, which is basically a server-based uh, local networking system that then would allow the uh, you could store a lot of data on the server and have the other then computers can all have access to it. The several Rotary clubs here are using it in rural locations where access oh. to the internet is not available. Raspberry Pi networking system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's two people that I know of that are involved. Uh, 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 the Bremerton Club, I think it is, with Bob Cairns. <clears throat> Jeff Harrison from the- And the Jeff Harris from uh, the uh, Gig Harbor Morning Club. Oh. And uh, he does, he, he, Jeff did his projects in Guatemala and of course, uh, uh, Bob Cairns has done his projects in Kenya. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're also looking at it in Canada at some of the First Nation locations. Right. So they, they, some of the Canadian clubs are looking at That's using the wonderful. technology up there in remote parts of their, uh, their territories. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful to know. We sure need it. Even out here in Great View. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's hey, very Pam. true. Thank Pam. you. Pam, can you um, talk a little bit about how the education changed the women and brought them, brought them together? Yes. Um, you know, I, I can give kind of third hand because in the outlining villages, they don't speak English. And so I was able to go and visit with them, especially with the spinning women. And um, so I'm, I'm, giving you an answer based on my observation and also based on, of course, Sister Helen's, um, the information. They, they now have um, this microfinance thing is, is going big time. 
I mean, they have 1,700 women now that are, they put them into small clusters of 10 women. And then this, this group of 10, they are um, met by what a person is called an animator. Once a month, goes from the convent out to each one of these villages and meets with this, this small group of 10. Find out how they're doing. Do they need help? What's, what's going great? What isn't? And um, th this has just been going on now for like five years, four to five years. And if they're having problems, how do you resolve it? They, they're getting the women together in larger groups of, of the small group in order to um, kind of having brainstorming ideas of how did you how did you solve this? And, and one thing that's kind of I don't know if it's odd or not, but there's been a problem. The men aren't sure how to handle all of this because the women are making money now and they're they're wanting to go buy their own, you know, their own groceries, their own and, and speak for how that money is going to be. So there is some a little bit of conflict going on in that arena. Um they've been able to do problem solving, like with the spinning. They had twenty twenty spinning. Um, wheels that came in and some women of course their mothers or maybe they get sick or but they can't go to the school and the part of the school where these this equipment is so there's six of the women that have the spinning wheels in their home and so they can still take care of their family and, and do what needs to be done and um, without going in but they really another thing they love is the fact that they're they're together the groups of these women who are spinning together in, I don't know if you remember seeing that one slide with them all in that one room. And so they're there chit-chatting and, you know, befriending each other. And they've taken this very, very seriously. In fact, in that one slide, there was probably, they knew that there was a meeting and they were told to come in because I was going to be there and Sister Helen. And I wanted to find out how is it going and what's going well and what isn't. And they had complaints about this equipment breaking down and when it breaks down who's going to fix it and how long is it going to take to fix it because when it's down we don't make money um so that was a very serious conversation and i did talk to sister helen asked her to um put together some sort of a what she would need as far as replacement parts things like that and that we could look into possibly funding that later on. Um, is, that a, is that a answering? Yeah. It's, it's, it's lifting them up individually as, as individuals. It's giving them ownership. It's giving them pride. It's giving them hope, which is something they really, really need. And, and with that, that's, that's rippling down to their children, too. In fact, the last meeting that we went to was, um, that were spinning, one woman was very sick and she couldn't um, attend. And so this young man came and she had asked her son to come to the meeting to listen because she, it was that important to her. I just wanted to break in real quickly and just welcome Mai Fukaya yes. uh, to our meeting. Hello, Mai. How are you? Good. I, we can't hear you. I think you have yourself muted, but I just wanted to acknowledge you and, and welcome you uh, to the meeting. Um, I will send you a recording uh, that includes the PowerPoint that uh, Pamela presented tonight. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to, to acknowledge Mai, who's one of our charter members. And Pamela, I had a question for you. I had a number of, but I want to focus on one important one. When you started this grant back in 2010, the foundation had different standards. Right. Okay. And your grant has been tremendous. I was writing down all the things you were able to accomplish mm -hmm. with only $50,000 and mm -hmm. the different industries that have been started there and the success that I, I, I can't, yeah. I, I have a hard time uh, understanding how you did it because there's a lot of success there and a number of things you did. And, with grants today, they're encouraging people to only, you know, work with one area of focus because the, the, the um, service measures 
you know, are, are, are very detailed and the outcomes they want are very detailed. In fact, I'm working with Chip Ross on the island right now and he's having a devil of a time answering Rotary's questions on a sanitation grant he's trying to do. So I guess my question for you is, you've done so well with this, current grants require the element of sustainability. Yes. How did you build that in before Rotary has, before the foundation even made that a requirement? Because I'm looking at what you sh you've shown us and seven years later, it's sustained so well. Yes, it has. And I have to, I give the credit to the sisters, really, and, and Rotary Shalom. Um, okay. it, it would not have been successful without having um, another Rotary. In fact, when I was told, Pam, you've got to find a ro Rotary group over there to host this, and thank goodness for the internet. So I just got on, I didn't know how to do that, and then I found Rotary Club Shalom and contacted them. And lo and behold, they were only one and a half miles away from the convent. They were that close. And so I got a hold of Sister Helen and I said, please run over there and introduce yourself at the next meeting. And so that relationship started right away. Um, go ahead. Oh, did someone, yeah. did someone cut in? No, go ahead, Pam. I, uh, so you were, one thing you talked about relationships, and this is the second time you've, you've, you've mentioned that. Uh, one of my experiences has been when I have gone and done grants, and, and I also taught for three years on, when I was foundation chair, mm -hmm. one of the most important things you can do is to establish relationships. Right. Not I just agree. with the people, but with the clubs. That's and when cool. you do that, there's a commitment on those people's part because they, you know, hey, I know Pamela and I'm yeah. committed to her and I'm gonna make sure that the money that she's brought to this project, you know, is gonna go yeah. to, um, uh, you know, is, is, is going to be, we're going to succeed in this grant. Yeah. And relationships, I think, are the most important thing you, you can do in, in, in starting a grant. I agree. I agree. And, and it's a commitment, a deep commitment. You have to be part humanitarian to take on something like that because you're committed to people that you've never met and don't speak your language probably. And maybe you'll never meet them, but you know what they're dealing with and, and you really want to be, um, help be of service to them and that that begins right there in the heart of why it would be successful and the sustainability part of it the sisters are very dedicated in their educating those and the the shalong people because they're they're a poor people but it's an interesting really interesting um culture the matrilineal part now that that has been handed down through the centuries. The men were hunters and gathered. They would be gone for months or years on end. And so the women had, had the responsibility of the home. And so it naturally grew into matrilineal. It never left matrilineal. So now you have a culture that was Christianized in the mid 1800s by the Methodists, by the way, um, that is not a caste system. It's a matrilineal system. You know, it kind of goes against everything India is supposed to stand for. Um, but they're doing beautifully it's, it's in relationship. Most of them are. Other questions for Pam, because I do, I do not want to dominate this, but I have more, but I want other people to ask her questions first. Well, all right. And um, this is a unique culture within the country of India, mm -hmm. Pam. And um, I guess one of my questions is, is that two part question, are, is there prejudice against this territory? Because India obviously is uh, n not Christian. Right. And uh, secondly, as part of that question, if there is any prejudice, what type of government support does this area receive? They don't receive a lot. And um, without having lived there, I can only give my speculation on it based on the sisters. And they're in a very key area up in the Northeast. You know, Bangladesh is up there and there's some bordering um, bad, bad people up there. And they're constantly trying to come in and, and take the young men, 
especially, mm -hmm. and turn them into terrorists. And so education is the only way that they see to keep that from happening. Um, within the other areas of India, I've, I've just been in Calcutta and Delhi, and they are um, the caste system there. Mm -hmm. And although I was at Mother Teresa's, which is Christian, the Hindu belief, you know, the Hindus, my, my um, experience with Hindus is they are very, very respectful of all belief systems. Mm -hmm. And um, they live morning, noon, and night. There's spirituality. And um, the I, Muslims are the same. You know, there, there's, not, there's, there's not conflict going on. And I'm not sure. I think it's probably, maybe it's because nobody really has much except for the Brahmins that are way up at the top of the, the caste system. But mm -hmm. people kind of accept what lot they've been given in life, you know, where they are. And when I was in India, in Calcutta, I, I never saw such kind and loving and joyful people ever in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, it, I was treated beautifully, but I wasn't treated like I was something way above them or anything but there's a there's a genuineness of the people that that don't have much and i think it's because they wake up every day and they're just okay how am i going to make it through the day i gotta eat and i gotta have a hopefully have a job and hopefully stay healthy and my kids are gonna you know hopefully go to school in calcutta school is number one, I'll tell you, in early in the morning, you'll see the parents that don't have much money just spit polishing their kids and putting on these little <laughs> uniforms, getting them in the rickshaw, and both mom and dad are with kids, you know, smiling and so proud as they take their child to school. So they understand the importance of an education. So Pam, uh, looking to the future, uh, I know that um, you've, uh, uh, hopefully been in contact with the uh, Centralia Club and uh, with regarding their projects in Papua New Guinea. And I know you're trying to work with this, uh, uh, right. the schools here on increasing their uh, sanitation and hygiene. Um, what do you see as the next step in uh, raising the people of Shillong? Well, boy, I, I see a lot of things, but you know, I'm trying not to be selfish because I know the members of our club are going to have other interests also. Sure. Um, what I would like to do is get to know the people of the other Rotary clubs around Shillong because Shillong Rotary has so many projects going on. They, they have, they're putting in toilets on the streets and, and they're starting some other schools. There, there's a school that's about 20 minutes away from this school. It is not run by a um, convent. And it's a small village. And I tell you, those people are so dedicated. When I went there, they, um, they just marched me all around that building, all around the grounds. They were so very, very proud. And if I could help to do anything for that particular school, I would do it. Because right now, it's being sustained only by the village. And I've got a picture of myself. The two chiefs of the village were there, these little skinny, tiny little guys. And I asked, can I go meet them? And, and so we had our picture taken. And then they, the man who was doing all of the talking, he's called the big man, the big guy. <laughs> and um, he actually, I should get it off the wall. He, he gave me a token that was from their school. It was hanging on the wall. Let me grab it. You see it? No. I'll pull it back just a little bit from the, no, a little closer now. Bring, bring it just a little closer. Now raise it up a little bit, Pam. Oh, I see. Now, now slowly bring it back towards you just a little bit. There's a reflection from a light. Oh, there we go. That's better. Okay. And that is what? This, this is a huge ceremony of the Kasi people. And, um, it, that's about all I know. It, it's a huge event and everybody is in their, their dress 
And this man was so um, proud of this, and he took it down off the wall, and he he wrote my name on the back and his name and everything, and he gave it to me. And yeah. and I kind of think it was kind of a pulling, you know, I'm going to give you this if you'll come back and help. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Their their version of quid pro quo, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Any other questions for Pam on her project before we uh, finish up with a few business items? If not, Pam, thank you so much. What a great first program. Uh, because one of the things we're trying to do is uh, learn what all the members are doing in Rotary, right? Whether it's community or international. And uh, I know uh, as I was foundation chair when we were trying to close Pamela's grant, and uh, you, I think you changed clubs, and it was a, a lot was going on. Yeah. And Rotary was on my case to get to get it closed because uh, what did they call yours? A legacy grant? Is that what they called it? Because I it was so far was back. Yeah. yeah. But it was it was difficult. Um, okay. What I wanted to do is just go a quick list for everyone before we close for the night, and um, ask everyone to send me emails. Of, um, of ideas you have, any connections you have to good programs, things that you think would be of value to share with our members. Because remember now, we're, we're completely across the district. So we are on Vancouver Island. We are all through Washington, Western Washington State. And so there is a lot to, to share. And our, our job is, as part of reconnecting to Rotary, if you will, from those of us who, or several of us who've been away for a while, uh, I haven't, but I, I recruited a lot of people back to, to Rotary in this club who've been away for a while, and we want to reconnect with what's going on. So those of us who know other people or have connections, to ask you to send me emails of potential programs. And an idea I have to tell you about is we are at some point in the near future, we're going to have the uh, Attorney General of Washington State. Oh. It, uh, unfortunately, it'll be a taped program because <laughs> apparently he doesn't want to work at seven o'clock at night. <laughs> but he has asked me to ask all of you, and I'll send an email out on this regard, to ask him to give him a list of questions prior to his taped presentation because he'll make his standard talk to us but then what he will do is he'll try to answer our questions because there's a lot going on that the attorney general is working on, right? I mean, yes. I mean, my goodness, they're suing Value Village. They're suing, I can't remember who else they're suing. They're suing somebody for having given information to the federal government. Uh, there's so much going on with the AG's office and it would be, I think it would be very interesting to, for us to ask him very pointed questions to get some answers back. So please, I will send an email out, but I'm letting you know ahead of time that he would like uh, us to present those questions. Um, another thing I'd like to do, and I'll send another email out, but I would like people to start volunteering for, I'm going to call it a members 10, but I would like at every meeting starting next month for a member to create, a, to, to present their profile of who they are. With their, you know, uh, and I'm not going to do a members too. I'm not going to restrict. I'd like everybody to take at least 10 minutes. Who you are, where you came from, what your career is. How did you ever, ever get connected to Rotary in the first place, right? And then what would you like to do in the future with Rotary? And, and uh, how would you like to, to see our club progress? Uh, your personal idea. Um, some ideas for fun and protocol and um, what you would like to see this club do. I mean, is this very, very casual thing we're doing right now uh, your idea, or do we want to do something fun, or is this, is this style working for you? Um, oh, most importantly, to, to give, to present to us or bring to us projects and events that are happening in Rotary Clubs in your area. Uh, uh, for example, I know a lot of things Tom Water Rotary is doing, but, you know, Tom Hansen, you're probably aware of other things. Sean, uh, what are other clubs, Troy, what's going on in Victoria, you know? What is it that we could, as a small club, do with the people that are – yeah, I saw that, Troy. <laughs> I'm trying to hide mine. But the, 
But by the way, uh, Howard, if you don't know, we've decided we're going to be a social club. So if someone has a glass of wine or something else, it's okay to enjoy that during the meeting. Okay. That's so, great. so we're a social club, but what's going on in your community that you know about and how, what can we, if anything, as our, as the e-club do to participate in that? Uh, there might be Tom, like for example, those of us in the Olympia area, Lake fair and the hot dog stand and, uh, Whatever's going on in any area, Troy, up your area, you've got something called a medieval festival, you know. Uh, if, we're visiting, if we're visiting Vancouver Island during that time, maybe we could participate in that Rotary Club's medieval festival, right? Just nod, say yes. <laughs> okay. But that kind of thing, right? Um, uh, to make everybody aware of what they know, of, know it, because I would like our club to try to find a way to, to participate uh, uh, physically when we, when, when we know something's going on. And, uh, and also uh, community events. For example, uh, my wife and I just last Saturday, we, we joined the Tumwater Rotary Club and we cleaned up an off-ramp to a freeway. Uh, uh, nothing but cigarette butts, beer cans, and fast food uh, bags. But the point being, you know, we got out there and we participated in a local Rotary Club uh, event or project. So that way we uh, stay better connected, right? At least, at least that's what I hope we can do. And then ideas for uh, what we maybe in the future can do as a Rotary Club. So I'm gonna send an email out to everyone, those ideas, and I'm gonna, I would ask you all to start sending me your ideas under each of those categories. So as we move into the future, we can sort of, uh, we begin to grow, right? And become more and more rotary. Uh, so with that in mind, who would like to be at our next meeting on February the 1st? Is that correct? First and third? Yes. Because the first is open right now. Uh, 15th will feature our own Howard Svegals there uh, on the Rotary Foundation. But who would like to be the first person to say, give us 10 minutes as to who they are, where they came from, how they got involved in Rotary and where they'd like to see this club go. Any volunteers this evening? No hands. Ah, Troy. Okay, Troy, thank you. Troy Alexander will, and I'll, and I'll put an agenda together, but Troy will be the first member of the club to present who he is, where he came from, why he's in Rotary, and where he hopes we'll go. Okay. Troy, good of the order. Troy, you are going to attempt to create a YouTube channel or a YouTube presence for our club, correct? I already did that while this meeting was going on. <laughs> the guy's amazing. <laughs> he has us connected to just about everything, and you've done it almost, almost all with your cell phone, right? Yeah, yeah, I pretty well do it with my phone. <laughs> Troy, I, I do a little bit. Of, I do a little bit of stuff with my computer, but yeah. Um, yep. When Bill first asked me to do this, I actually wasn't even in town, and so I set up all of our accounts via my phone and got wow. got everything rolling. Now you all know why I'm so proud of my rotary son. Troy's my rotary son, and when it's my turn in the future to give you my ten minutes, I'll explain how that how that came about. Um, Troy, you're fantastic. So, thank you so thank much. You. And then you'll send something to me so I can get the, um, the videos um, on there somehow. Yeah, I'll try and figure that part out. Right now, I've just got it created, and it takes a while. Like, I've already gone into YouTube to try to search it, but it's going to uh, – I guess it takes a little bit of while before it even shows yeah. up in the search. Probably 24 hours or so, huh? Probably, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we're can coming down to the end of the meeting. You go to the order. Up? Does – Anyone have anything like like to say or add before we close Bill, tonight? Bill, I have a question. Yes, sir. You're, this is Chuck Pruitt. You yes. seem to invite us to go and visit other Rotary clubs. Just recently, I mean, you know, find out what's going on in your area that you were saying. So has anyone had experience going to other Rotary clubs and saying and identifying what club we belong to and what's the best way to do that? And do we need to make a few makeup cards and that sort of thing? Well, that's a good question, uh, uh, Chuck. Uh, that sounds like you had two questions there. One is, uh, 
how to find out what's going on? Do you physically go to another club or do we just simply uh, uh, search the district website and go to the links to um, other clubs and find out what those clubs are doing? Uh, one of the things I've been working on, I used to be the webmaster for the Tumwater Rotary Club. One of the things I'm going to try to do is uh, start adding links to our website to other clubs in the district, which means we're gonna have one long, long list, I think. But that's one way to find out what's going on, right? Is to, is to uh, set those up, link to those clubs, find out from their Facebook pages and their uh, websites what they're doing. Uh, if, if you have the time and you can go visit a, a Rotary Club, that would be great because anything we can do to promote our new club would be terrific. Um, makeups. Um, well, how do, we, I, how do we identify ourselves? People are not going to yeah. uh, readily understand. Oh, okay. You're right. Uh, okay, we identify, so we call ourselves, we are the Rotary E Club of District 5020. That's who we are. Are we going to do something like membership cards or um, yeah. something of that nature? Okay, good. I'm writing this down. Membership cards, okay. Uh, Name badges also, Bill. Okay. Uh, okay, how do we – those are all good okay, badges, okay. Uh, and makeups. I have to write all this down or I'll forget it. Okay, Chuck, to, answer your, to try to answer your question on makeups – I was on the Council on Legislation in 2013, and then Brian Beagle was on there in 16, and Rotary has pretty much, I won't say thrown it out, but the emphasis on makeups is minimal. Uh, they, they just don't, the, the, new, the new Rotary people, you people out there here in our club, and younger people, uh, the emphasis on you must make so many meetings, you must make up, uh, it's, it's just not there anymore. Mm -mm. Uh, so there's not, a, there's not an emphasis on, uh, okay, Chuck Pruitt, you missed two meetings last month. Mm -hmm. You better make up or you're out of our club. That, that, that's, yeah, gone. that's gone. That's um, gone. So Why? I don't know um, how to answer your question on that. If you would like yeah, a make up. I, I can certainly uh, set My that up in the system. No, I, 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 you answered the question. You, you don't, we don't need to get, if we go visit a, a, another club, we, you told us how to identify our club and we don't need to worry about the makeup card that they hand us. We just... Correct. Uh, if you, if you want to let me know that, uh, it's built into the Club Runner website and we can certainly mark that down as made up. Um, well, but I mean, the, the Scottsdale Club has sometimes very interesting speakers that I can go over and, and, and visit, but this is how I would do it. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, if you want to make up fine, if you don't, I mean, it's not an emphasis, and I don't, and as, as this new club format is going, I don't know that we need to emphasize that. Uh, I, I certainly don't want anyone to feel any pressure that, oh boy, if I don't attend, you know, I'm, I'm out. Because the whole idea was to bring people back to Rotary, not to create new, new restrictions. Um, the question on badges. Uh, and, okay, membership cards are easy uh, because uh, the system Club Runner actually, you can actually print a membership card out of Club Runner. I can do that. And then what I could probably do is scan those and send them to each of you and you can, you know, uh, print it down and cut it and put it in your wallet. That's that's pretty easy to do. Uh, badges, I don't know because how do you want to do that? It, it costs money. Uh, we can go through Club Runner, not Club Runner. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Russell Hampton is a, is a vendor. Uh, I'm going to Pets in February. How about how about I do this? How about I I look at talk to some of the vendors at Pets and find out what we can do in the way of a badge. Why, why, why would we ever use a badge? Well, well Pamela we... recommended it. Pamela, why yeah. would you want a badge? <laughs> because, well, I'm thinking when we go to conferences, you know, most, most people will have something identifying where they're from. Of course, you do get a badge when you go to a conference. If we go yeah. to a club outside of E Rotary, if we go and visit a club, usually when you sign in, then you'll put it. So maybe we don't need badges. You know, yeah. it's, it's just the thought of 
identification if we're around people who do not know who we are. Right. Uh, I, Why don't I, I look I into I personally it? have a rotary tattoo on my leg, so people know <laughs> he does. <laughs> he really does. I've seen it. <laughs> oh, Uh-oh, here yeah. we go. Yeah, Troy. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. There it is. See it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Troy, this is Brett. Add, add this to your IT super freakness. I want a QR code. If we're going to be an e-club, I want a QR code created that will link it to our, our digital presence. And then when I'm at a meeting, I can either throw up the QR code on my phone or on a piece of paper, and then they can find us that way by scanning. Wow. Uh, I, I will take that away, and I will work with that. <laughs> Thanks, I know Canadian what a QR code is, but I have Great no idea. idea how to do what you want to do, Brett. <laughs> Wonderful. These are fantastic ideas. This is what new clubs are all about, right? Um, uh, I, you know, I will check at pets pam and just find out what it would cost I go one but i sure. uh oh jerry go ahead i heard jerry jerry are you there go ahead okay yeah uh, i thought i was muted sorry no you're not go ahead sir what do you want to add to that no i i think everyone um is making a good decision. We don't need badges, but ID cards would be great. That's okay. okay. That is easy because Club Runner actually has it in there and I will be happy to create a membership card for everyone and uh, I'll sign them and I'll scan them and then I'll just send them out to everyone. And when you get home, you know what, then you can just, you know, uh, take your scissors and cut them and you have put it in your wallet. How's that? <laughs> so the takeaway is here, we're not worried about makeups, Chuck. I underst my understanding is we're not going to pursue badges at this point in time, but I will talk to people and find out what they cost. And then I'll do the membership cards and send them out. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, anything else for the good of the order? Because we are, we are at our eight, we are at eight o'clock and uh, uh, we promised everybody we tried to keep these on time. Bill, I have a quick, Bill, I have a question about uh, guests. About what? Um, uh, inviting guests. Yes, sir. Yes. Can we, um, can we invite guests and, and have them view this as potential members? I think that's one way we can build our membership. Absolutely. Uh, here's what I plan to do, uh, because right now, you know, we have limits. I think we can have up to 100 people, which would be awesome uh, <laughs> under the current system. But what I thought I would do is... I would put on the website, and maybe, Troy, I could CC it to you for the Facebook, but prior to each meeting, I would uh, uh, set up and tell everyone, this is what the meeting is for the E-Club next week. Send the webmaster, Bill McCarthy, uh, a request to join the meeting. Because then what I can do is I'll keep a list, and then I will send those links. Howard asked if he could join the meeting tonight. So I sent him a, a, a link, the advertising link. You know, the, the, you all got through my outlook. You all, had a, you all got a thing saying, please join the meeting. But I don't want to put that, that out to the whole world because I don't know how many people would actually join or show up out of curiosity. So I wanted it to be people who really wanted to join the meeting. I would, they would send me requests. I would send them the link. What do you think? Is that, is that a good way to, to do it or not? Or should we just open it up to the whole world and say, here's the link? I think it'd be great to uh, be able to capture who it is that is interested in joining. Um, okay. That way we can follow up with them and okay. say, hey, how did you enjoy it? Would you like to join and have that follow up that we would have in a, in a real person club too? Okay. So yes. rather than just put the whole invite out there, uh, ask anyone who would like to attend the meeting, let me know, and then I'll send them the link. And that way we can track who it was. And Okay. Okay. That, that's a good way to do it. Any, any other ideas on that? It worked, it worked well for me. It worked well. Okay. So, Fred, I guess that's your answer is uh, each before each meeting, uh, uh, Troy and I will put on the website and Facebook, hey, our meeting's coming up. This is what the topic is. Uh, if you'd like to join... Uh, please send, it, uh, send your email to Bill McCarthy 
and uh, Bill in turn will send them the link. Sounds good. All right. Sounds great. Terrific. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Uh, good meeting tonight, Brett. Yes. Uh, I'm glad you could make it. I see you had to go through multiple locations to be with us, but that's great. Uh, yeah, well, that's why this club is going to work for me, baby. I, uh, I'm in, I was in Sioux Falls, South Dakota today. I'm now in Minneapolis. I was in the car for about an hour of the meeting, and <laughs> I'm now at the hotel, but I was able to join and keep on track. So that's, that's why great. we're here, man. I was following his background as he was there, and I thought, what, where is he going? So you went from your car into wherever you are now. That's awesome. All right. Okay, this is, why we, this is why we started this club. We have, we have Vancouver Island. We have, we have Minnesota now. We have Scottsdale, Arizona. We have, uh, this is amazing. So this is what we were trying to achieve, and I think it's just going to get better in the future. Any other comments before we close the meeting? Uh, Bill, real quick, thank you for uh, listening in. I thought it was great hearing the program today. It's good seeing Chuck Pruitt, who was a member of our Gig Harbor Club for a while. So it's good seeing him uh, in this thing. Good to see you, Howard. Uh, and the other one was the biggest news, I think, of Rotary this year is that they announced the theme for the next Rotary year. Yeah. Wow. So uh, if you hadn't seen that yet, uh, Barry Razin, who will be the president in the following year, said wants us all to, to be the, the inspiration. I have to tell you something real quickly. I'm going to brag on that. Uh, Troy has already put that on the Facebook, pay our Facebook page. And I have to tell you, and when Instagram I was district governor. And Twitter. What was that, Troy? I said, and Instagram and Twitter. And Twitter. Okay, see, I don't even know what those are. <laughs> I have to learn, Troy. I'm going to have to learn. Uh, I have to tell you real quickly, when I was district governor in 2003 and four, my district theme was, be an inspiration. Yes. So I have to let Barry Rasson know that uh, uh, that that's copyrighted. <laughs> well, he's gone to, you have to be the inspiration. The inspiration, right. Yeah. But anyway, I, it's a great theme. I'm really glad he's doing that uh, because that's what it's all about. <laughs> okay, okay, everyone. Thank you so very much. Uh, and I uh, will, and uh, I'll try to get a program together, find something for a program for, February the 1st. Howard, you're on for February 15th. And everyone have a great two weeks. Thank and you. Uh, we'll see you. We'll, and Pam, thank you so much for that program. You're welcome. You're welcome. Good night. All right. Night, everyone. Good night, Good night. Good night everybody. Not at all. Yeah, it worked out pretty well.